You're listening to Front of the Line with Jack Kilby. And now, part two of our conversation with Jack Kilby. Jupiter. It was just uh, that tune is definitely it's a journey, man. That's <laughs> that whole tune. It's like it's more than a tune. It's like uh, I don't, what do you even call something like that? It's got these multiple sort of like movements or parts to it. You know, it's it's I feel like sort of derived from some sort of classical thing. I mean, because I do take very yep. distinct elements from the original, right, and right. then just sort of added these various little things around it to bring it wrap it into the you know jazz world but it's done seamlessly um, and it's done yeah. effortlessly in the playing and that's what i can appreciate about that um i also can appreciate the fact that you do have different feels if you will in volume one versus volume two and right. though there are vocals in volume uh, there are vocals in the song a sensitive like ladies in volume one oh, right. volume one right. by and large is instrumental and volume two right. really comes with the powerhouse vocals. Was that intentional? Well, my feeling was that when before I'd even conceived that the album would be in two parts, I knew that these two vocal tunes would be last because I am just of the opinion. I will stress opinion that once you go once you go to like vocals, you can't really go back. And I don't say I, it's not can't, but I just find myself like when I listen to a recording where there's like one or two vocal tracks interspersed in what is a largely instrumental one. It's a little difficult for my ear to just go back to the instrumental. And maybe that's because sometimes, you know, the vocal tune is maybe a little more, I don't know, pop in some regard, or just that the song itself is more of a song and not, you know, like an improvised, like jazz song, more right? It's just accessible like something that I shape. Community. Right. Yeah. I get you. Right. So my thinking is just that, you know, like once you go to the backbeat, there's no real going back. You know, once that's when everybody gets up, they've had their glasses of wine, they want to dance, you know, because everybody can find the backbeat. Not everybody can can at least think that they're able to dance to, you know, like swing and jazz, unless you sort of know how to swing dance, right? But I feel like the common concert goer, you know, would feel confident or mildly confident dancing to something that has a backbeat. So I just knew that at least that tune and the sort of R&B vibe that it is, would be last, you know. Um, it made sense to the, you know, to keep Christie's uh, arrangements together, you know, by putting it at the end. But again, yeah, I mean, just having those lyric tunes at the end, I knew that would sort of uh, hopefully put the finishing touch on it for those folks who were who otherwise wouldn't listen without it. Because we know that there's all the, there's people that you know just don't really or can't really get with just instrumental music. So my hope was that. You know, we'll bring in those listeners that want to hear some words. You know, hopefully those might be more accessible to people. They might chart better on the radio. They might perform, you know, if they get put on a playlist or something that would drive traffic back to, you know, the band ultimately where they might find other things that they like. So I'm sort of proud that I, I hope and feel like the band has something for everybody. And I just hope to expand on that, you know, in the future. I think that's a good way to think about it, honestly, because I actually know people um, some of the feedback I've received is I love both parts, but I love the second part more because I love the vocals like it's a song, you know, because the way the the ear is trained, the ear is trained, as you know, around four on the floor. So when you unless you're unless, you know, you're talking about Latin music or, or, or Spanish music, but for the most part, when you're straight ahead pop. If rock, this is what you're thinking for on the floor. When you venture too far from that, people sometimes have a difficulty appreciating it because we aren't taught music appreciation in the same way anymore, unfortunately. But right. that's some of the feedback I've gotten. Uh, I, I've received uh, nothing but positive feedback. I honestly have not met one person who's listened to either part and said didn't like. Everyone is love, 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 really love. Like, it's been so positive. What's the feedback you've been receiving? 
I mean, it's been the same for me. I feel very lucky. Either everybody loves me too much to tell me anything otherwise, <laughs> or they just really do love it. And I think people really do love it, you know. Uh, the folks that have listened, you know, have been, it's been nice to hear from folks, you know, especially at the shows. You know, people really enjoy the music at the shows. Um, so, again, you know, I think it's just continue to keep shouting or singing the song, you know, and hope that more people start to listen sing along so that other people can hear you know and it's definitely a uh, like a grassroots movement for sure with being a new artist you know you just appreciate everybody that comes out that again especially in today's world like if you leave your house to, and put on shoes and especially now like put on a coat and venture out into the cold to come see my show then I mean that means a lot you know that, that's someone really looking out for you when it's so easy to just say eh I'm just gonna double tap this stuff on Instagram or you know whatever it is well not that we don't appreciate that but you know we can't eat that way really so we definitely still need people coming out we need people sharing the music with their network you know it's so easy to share now it's like one touch you know they've made it as easy as they could these developers <laughs> that you just have to do as little effort as possible um, to share something you know, so, and that really helps a lot too, because you never know, even if that's just one person, you know, if one per, what is it they say? Everybody, each, each person reach somebody or everybody reach somebody, something like that, you know? So, and, and then what, the dominoes will fall. That's what your fans are saying. Yeah. Let's talk about the dreaded critics. Dun, 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 dun. Right. What's your right. Rotten tomato score? <laughs> well, it's been cool, you know, to... To be able to have critics, you know, and to be able to have gotten some some good publicity so far. I've gotten some nice reviews, um, all about jazz. Um, there's another a couple of blogs that were very positive. Um, we did chart on the Roots Music Report uh, for the first week at number 23. That's awesome. Which is very cool. Um, we were number one for the jazz ads for the North American uh, college and community radio stations, which is cool. That's absolutely, um, that's, yeah, college radio is huge, especially for kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. No, that was great. And I'm sure that that probably had something to do with, um, I got to do a radio interview, my first radio interview, actually, when I was down in Charlottesville doing that release show uh, on the 11th, where I got to go into WTJU. Uh, thanks to Gary Funston and Brian Keena over there. And I got to talk to Brian, who was known as the Jazz Messenger, uh, where we got to play some of the tracks, you know, talk about the record, you know, especially because everybody down there knows, you know, John Durth and Charles Owens, who are in my band. And, you know, I, I lived in Charlottesville for six years, so I really think of that as my second hometown. Um, but it was just really nice to, you know, go in and talk to him and, and be able to sort of have that, it was a very like comfortable and safe environment for me to have like my first radio interview, right? You know, right, right. Trust into NPR right away, where I'm going to be shitting my pants about <laughs> what's he going to ask me about? You know, am I going to sound like an idiot? But you know, that was great, and uh, right. so it's been nice, you know. And that, yeah, it has gotten some some good critic reviews so far. I think we'll be expecting some more here in the coming months. Um, so it's exciting, you know, to see it on the internet. <laughs> and there you are. So one of the things I found interesting about this was that you went beyond social media and beyond just the performances and the releases and the, you know, Twitter shout outs and Facebook shout outs and YouTube videos. And you actually did a podcast in which you spoke with members of the band and guests on the record. What was that like? for you or what is what is that like because we're actually still in the middle of it this is the beginning of part two right. coincide with the release of part two of the record no i mean it's been great and thanks to you for you know curating this for me you know and it's been a really awesome platform to be able to do all those things that you just mentioned you know so many of these folks are are good friends of mine you know so when you're like hey can you call your homies and like just talk to them for 45 minutes <laughs> i mean it's it's a, it's a nice task. It definitely doesn't feel like work. And, you know, some of the folks, you know, that don't live in town, like a lot, I don't get to talk to super often because, you know, he's working and sort of living the New York grind up there. 
you know, Mark, I don't get to see as often as I'd like because he's super busy, but it's nice to talk. I mean, that's one of my best friends. John, we had a great conversation with John. Um, great conversation with Charles. Uh, Chris as well. Uh, it's funny that I see Chris the most because we play together about once a month. We've got this gig together. Um, so it's funny in that uh, that was almost a little more like unnatural because we do see each other so much, you know, and so we're a little sort of like, you know, caught up. It sort of took us a second, I think, to kind of just adjust to that. Um, but then, you know, juxtapose that, you know, the people that I know really well with uh, being able to talk to Braxton Cook actually on the phone for like the first time, believe it or not. We'd only conversed through, you know, text message and email um, in getting him to be involved on playing on Colors of the Wind. And so that was cool. I mean, we just kind of got to shoot the you know stuff for a little bit and get to know each other a little better so that was very cool uh cv we did i don't get to see or talk to him as often either because he's super busy he's got two kids he's gigging all the time so that was great i hadn't talked to him i think since uh before i was going in for a mixing session like last june so that was like a few months or so uh, when i think about it it's crazy how fast the time flies sometimes um, but it's been great, you know, and looking forward to getting a few more. Oh, Micah Robinson came through. That was cool because he came to the house. So we did that in person um, since he lives around me. Um, and that was great. So, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. And just to, it's nice to obviously, you know, hear how much they appreciate doing it, too, because it's hard in that there's not really a, a we in jazz. You know what I mean? In terms of like a band, it's hard to get people to sort of you know, get into the band mentality in jazz because so many people are band leaders themselves, right? Um, right. But yeah, so it's, it, it's, but yeah, you know, that's kind of my favorite part about it. It's like, you do it for the music and the people that you make music for. So it's just so great to, to have these folks to be able to play with and, and to be, you know, people in my life. Sparky the Fire Dog here. Protect your family from fire. Make sure your home has smoke alarms in every bedroom, outside your sleeping areas, and on every level of your home, even your basement. For games and activities, go to sparky.org. We want to keep you, your family, and your community safer from fire. This message brought to you by the National Fire Protection Association and your local fire department. Visit sparky.org. Thanks for listening to part two of our three-part conversation with Jack Kilby. Visit your favorite online retailer and download or stream Love is a Song Anyone Can Sing, Volumes 1 and 2 by Jack Kilby in the Frontline.